Hi, good afternoon, student. Next, uh, we can start the next unit of surgical nursing, that is nursing management of patients with disorders of ear, nose, and throat. In this unit, we are mainly dealing with the conditions that affect the ear, nose, and throat, as well as we will be discussing regarding the review of anatomy and physiology of ENT. Okay, so in this class, we can learn more about the review of anatomy and physiology of ear as well as the assessment part of ear. First of all, the anatomy and physiology of ear. The ear is housed in the temporal bone of the skull. It is divided into three parts, namely external ear, middle ear and internal ear. These are the three parts of ear. First of all, the external ear. The ears are located on each side of the head at approximately eye level. The external ear consists of two parts, namely auricle and external auditory canal. So these are the main two parts consisted in the external ear. Then the tympanic membrane, it is otherwise called as eardrum, which separates the external ear from the internal, the external ear from the middle ear. First, part of the in, uh, external ear is auricle. It is also called as pinna. It is attached to the side of the head by skin at approximately a 20 to 30 degree angle. It is composed mostly of cartilage. The main parts included in the auricle that helix. It is the outer rim of the pinna, then concave, deepest part leading to the ear canal and tragus and antitragus. These are the triangular pores of cartilage that project over the entrance to the ear canal. So these are the parts included in the auricle or pinna. So in this picture we can see first is helix. It is the outer rim of the pinna, then antihelix, then conge. Conge means it is a deeper part of the external ear and there will be Tragus and antitragus, these are the triangular folds of cartilage that project over the entrance to the ear canal. So, here we can see the tragus and antitragus. Okay. Next is the ear canal, it is an under or second part of the external ear. It extends from the concave of the pinna to the tympanic membrane. So, it is a canal which will be having a shape of S shape. Ear canal will be having a S shape and the length will be in 2.5 cm. This is all about the ear canal. Okay, next is the tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane means it is actually a partition between an external ear and a middle ear. It is otherwise called as eardrum. Okay, then it is having an oval shape, thin, translucent pearly gray membrane. It covers the end of the auditory canal. Eardrum separates the canal from the middle ear. So in this picture you can see the tympanic membrane. So this is the tympanic membrane. This is the part of external ear. So part of external ear and this is the internal, sorry, middle ear. So tympanic membrane will be acting as a partition between the external ear and the middle ear. So here you can see the auditory canal. This is the external ear and it will be having a pinna and a ear canal. Next is the middle ear. It lies between the ear canal and the inner ear. In this picture you can see that middle ear it lies between the ear canal and the inner ear. This is the inner ear. It consists of the middle ear cleft and contents. The contents in the ossicles or ear bone, then oval and round windows, eustachian tube and station nerve. These are the parts or contents present in the middle ear. So this is a picture of a middle ear. Here we can see the eardrum, that is tympanic membrane, that is the partition between the external ear and the middle ear. Then ossicles, ossicles it is otherwise called as ear bones. Then tympanic cavity will be there and the eustachian tube. So this is the picture of middle ear. The ossicles, it is also called as ear bones. There will be three ossicles present in the middle ear which are 
malleus, stapes, and ingot. In the bracket, I am writing the um, structure or shape of these bones. So, malleus it is hammer in shape, it is outermost and largest ossicle present in the middle ear. Then, stapes means it is the most smallest ossicle in the human body, it is having a stirrup shape, it is an innermost ossicle, ear ossicle. Then, incus. Incus is an annual shape. It lies between the malleus and stapes bone and it is shaped like a tooth with two roots. I will show the pictures in the coming slide. So this is the auricus. Okay. This is the malleus bone. It is having a hammer shape. Then incus or annual shape. Then stapes or stirrup. Stapes is the smallest bone in the body. Okay. So in this picture, there will be, you can see the three bones. Okay, stapes, incus and malleus. This is windows. Windows mainly two type, round window and oval window. Round window means it is an opening in the ear from which sound vibrations exist, exit. Which means the main purpose of ear is to conduct the sound waves is mean so round round window means it is a opening in the inner ear from which sound waves will be exiting then oval window the opening in the inner ear into which sound vibrations enter so in this picture you can see the oval window this is the oval window and around it through the oval window the vibration sound vibrations will be entered and through the round window there will be Exiting of the sound vibration. Okay. Next is the eustachian tube. It a narrow channel. It connects the middle ear to the nasal pharynx. Okay, nasal pharynx. So here you can say this is the eustachian tube. Okay. This is the middle ear. Then the Nasopharynx. So it's a connection between the middle ear to the nasopharynx. Then inner ear. It is otherwise called as labyrinth. It contains the sense organs for hearing and balance. So inner ear is the uh, important one of the important parts of the ear. Why? Because it is contains the sense organs for hearing and balance. It consists of the bony labyrinth. It will be having two labyrinth bony and membranous labyrinth bony labyrinth means it's a hollow cavity in the temporal bone of the skull with a system of passages comprising two main functional parts the functional parts include the cochlea and the vestibular system so these main two parts included in the bony labyrinth of the inner ear the cochlea means it's dedicated to hearing so hearing is mainly depending on cochlea this will be converting sound pressure patterns from the outer ear into the electrochemical impulses which are passed onto the brain via the auditory nerve. So, uh, ear, uh, ear is will be functional hearing. So, hearing is the protective part of the cochlea. Okay. Then, vestibular system, it is mainly dedicated for the function of balance. Okay. So, inner ear may not Important to argue that under functioning on the hearing in the balance room, hearing may not to function where the cochlear presence in the room, the stress system may not to balance the help in it. Okay, this is the picture of an inner ear, sorry, or internal ear. Here you can see the cochlea. It is a snail shape. This is cochlea, then vestibular duct. Okay. This is cochlea. This is snail shape. Snail shape. Then bony spiral canal divided into three channels: cochlea duct, scala vestibuli, and scala tympan. Next type of uh, part is membranous labyrinth. It runs inside of the bony labyrinth and creates three parallel fluid-filled spaces. The two outer are filled with perineum. 
and inner with entrolim. So the inner ear will be having fluid-filled spaces. That's why the conduction will be possible. Okay, it consists of the utricle, the saccule, the semicircular canal, the cochlear duct, and the organ of corti. Organ of corti is considered as the end organ for hearing. So that's why the internal ear can be considered as the important part of the ear because it will be having the functioning of hearing. The three semicircular canals are at the right angles to each other and are named the anterior, which will be present on the superior part and posterior. It will be seen on the inferior part and the lateral, which will be having a position at the horizontal level. Okay. So in the inner ear, you can see that there will be cochlea will be there, then the three semicircular canal. These three semicircular canals will be having a position at the right angles to each other. The anterior, posterior and the lateral. Okay. In this picture, you can see the semicircular canal. This is the horizontal canal. Then this is the posterior canal. Then this is the anterior canal. These three canals are situated at the right angles to each other. Okay. This is the total anatomy of the ear. Here, in this picture, you can see the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The outer ear will be having a structure of auricles. Then conchae can be seen. Helix and antihelix. We have already discussed regarding this type of parts. Okay. Then, tympanic membrane can be seen. This is tympanic membrane. It's the partition between an external ear to the middle ear. This is the ear canal. Okay. Then this is the middle ear. It will be having three ear ossicles, namely stapes, malleus, incus, stapes. This is stapes, this is incus, and this is malleus. I'll explain regarding the structure. Okay. Then this is the part of inner ear. This is cochlea. Then this is the eustachian tube. Eustachian tube is the connection between the middle ear and the nasopharynx. Okay, I hope you got an idea regarding the anatomy in the physiological basis of hearing. Okay, till now we are discussing regarding the structure of the ear. Next, we can discuss regarding the functions of the auditory system. The function is mainly divided into three parts according to the structure. So when coming to the external ear, it will be having only two functions. That is sound wave conduction and wax production. Sound wave conduction means the head, pinna and the ear canal act as an integrated system to transmit sound vibrations to the eardrum or tympanic membrane, sound is transmitted from the external ear through the middle ear which amplifies the sound to the inner ear. So the main part of external ear in the sound, conduction of the sound wave to transmit the sound vibrations. Okay, in the external ear there will be transmission of the sound vibrations to the eardrum and it will be entered into the inner ear through the middle ear. Okay, then next function is production of Cerumen or ear wax. The main function is to protect the ear. Cerumen is having a function of protection. Then the sticky consistency of the wax and the fine hairs of the ear canal help to clean the ear canal of foreign matter and protect it from water damage. To clear the ear canal from the foreign bodies, the ear wax will be having a sticky consistency so that the foreign matter cannot be attached to the ear canal okay then next is the function of the middle ear it will be having a sound wave conduction as we have discussed in the previous slide the ossicles transmit sound vibrations mechanically ossicles provide an efficient means of transmitting sound vibrations from the air molecules of the external ear to the fluid molecules in the inner ear why because in the external ear there will be air there will be transmission of air uh, from the external ear in the inner ear, there will be perilymph and endrolymph. So, there will be fluid molecules. So, in the middle ear, there will be mechanical transmission of the uh, vibrations due to the presence of these three ear ossicles. 
then ventilation and pressure regulation it is only because of the presence of eustachian tube the eustachian tube provide an air passage from the nasopharynx to middle ear to equalize the pressure on both sides of the eardrum so to maintain a constant pressure there is um, a help of eustachian tube will be needed adondana namukku nasal congestion varumbam പ്രഷർ വേരിയേഷൻസ് ഉണ്ടാവും സോ അവിടെ പ്രഷർ വേരിയേഷൻ വരുന്ന യൂസ്റ്റേഷൻ ട്യൂബിനകത്ത് ബ്ലോക്കേജ് ഉണ്ടാവുന്ന സമയത്താണ് ദെൻ ഇന്നർ ഇയർ ഇന്നർ ഇയർ ഈസ് മെയിൻലി ഹാവിങ് എ ഫംഗ്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ഹിയറിംഗ് ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് ബാലൻസ് ഓക്കെ ഫസ്റ്റ് ഈസ് വി ക്യാൻ സി ദ പാത്ത് വേ ഓഫ് സൗണ്ട് വേവ്സ് സൗണ്ട് വേവ്സ് എൻജർ ദ ഔട്ടർ ഇയർ ദ പാസ് അലോങ് ദ ഇയർ കനാൽ ടു ദ ഇയർ ഡ്രം ദെൻ സൗണ്ട് വേവ്സ് ബൗൺസ് ഓഫ് ദ ഇയർ ഡ്രം മേക്കിംഗ് ഇറ്റ് വൈബ്രേറ്റ് the eardrum is connected to the three tiny bowl the ossicles such as malleus incisus stapes the vibrations pass along these bones due to that there will be mechanical transmission of these vibrations then the third of these bones the stapes presses against the oval window in the cochlea the vibrations pass into the fluid inside the cochlea here they shake thousands of tiny hairs that stick into the fluid from the hair cells as the hairs vibrate the hair cells generate nerve signals the nerve signals travel along the auditory nerve to the hearing center of the brain so this is a pathway of uh, sound waves then balance the utricular and sacular vestibular receptors that can be seen in the inner ear that position the head as it relates to the pull of gravity these receptors contain hair cells that detect changes in the inner accelerations including the force of gravity so ear balance main item depend cheyidikkunnathu uh, vestibular receptors veyana ee vestibular receptors nu parayunnathana utricular sacral nu parayunnathu okay the semi circular canal are arranged to send rotational movements such as movements or change in the position each of the semi circular canal at connects with its uh, utricle where the canal connects with the utricle is an enlarged portion this is utricle okay then ampulla means it is an enlarged portion at the end part of the semi circular canal okay സോ ബാലൻസിനെ മെയിൻ ആയിട്ടും കൺട്രോൾ ചെയ്യുന്നത് യൂട്രിക്കലും സാക്രളും ആണ് അതിന് അതാണ് നമ്മൾ വിസ്റ്റുവർ റിസെപ്റ്റേഴ്സ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഈ യൂട്രിക്കൽ കണക്ട് ചെയ്തിരിക്കുന്നത് സെമി സർക്കുലർ കനാലുമായിട്ടാണ് സോ ആ ചേഞ്ചസ് ഉണ്ടപ്പം ഓട്ടോമാറ്റിക്കലി ദാറ്റ് ക്യാൻ സെൻസ് എ സെമി സർക്കുലർ കനാൽ ദെൻ ആംബുള കണ്ടെയ്ൻസ് എ ക്ലസ്റ്റർ ഓഫ് ഹെയർ സെൽസ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ഡിറ്റ് ബി ചേഞ്ച് ദ പൊസിഷൻ ഓക്കെ ദിസ് പിക്ചർ യു ക്യാൻ സി ദ ആംബുള there is a bulging or enlarged portion at the end part end part of the semi circular canal then this is utricle and this is sacral okay it will be attached to the semi circular canal automatically it can detect the change in the position so that we can manage the balance okay next is assessment of ear till now we were discussing regarding the structural and functional aspect of the ear i hope you got an idea regarding the structure okay next we can discuss regarding how we can assess a patient with a complaint of ear diseases so if a patient comes to you with complaints of ear problems first we should collect a detailed history from the history you will get a lot of information regarding the chief complaints as well as the clinical features and the etiological factors of this condition so in the history you should collect the history regarding the demographic data because age is having an important aspect or important part in the ear diseases because as age increases patient may get deterioration in hearing okay so age kodunnadana anusarichu automatically hearing acuity koreyum the reciprocal changes are down so eppadi nammal age nu parayunnathu one of the main important uh, aspects of uh, history collection aanu Then Then current health status, what are are the the chief complaints on admission? And the complaint on patient? And the psychosocial aspect, and the patient in the, uh, clinical features not often, patient in the, um, related factors in affect you. Okay, hearing. Then chief complaints. Chief complaints നമ്മൾ മെയിൻ ആയിട്ട് അഫക്ട് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ പേഷ്യന്റ് മെയിൻ ആയിട്ട് പെയിൻ ആയിരിക്കും ഉണ്ടാവുന്ന അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഇയർ ബാലൻസിന്റെ പ്രോബ്ലംസ് ആയിരിക്കും അപ്പൊ ചീഫ് കംപ്ലൈൻസ
focus on the onset duration and frequency precipitating and relieving cycle namma sadharana disease condition namma chief complaint especially pain ne okay asthma ne cheyna pole thanne aanu ear asthma ne namma cheyanad namma eppol onset eppol aanu chief complaint start cheyada for example ipo hearing loss aitu varunna or patient aanengil hearing loss selvam sadhana aitu varam alengil gradual aitu varam so you should call the onset of that disease on uh, chief complaint the duration etra naal aitu patient ne complaint undu then frequency then precipitating eppol aanu ചീഫ് കംപ്ലയിന്റ് കൂടുതലായിട്ട് വരുന്നത് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ റിലീവ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഫാക്ടേഴ്സ് റെസ്റ്റ് എടുക്കുന്ന സമയത്ത് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ വേറെ എന്തെങ്കിലും മെഷേഴ്സ് ഇന്റർവെൻഷൻ ചെയ്യുന്ന സമയത്ത് പേഷ്യന്റ് റിലീഫ് കിട്ടുന്നുണ്ട് ഈ കാര്യങ്ങളെല്ലാം നമ്മൾ ഹിസ്റ്ററിയിൽ ഇൻക്ലൂഡ് ചെയ്യണം ദെൻ ക്ലിനിക്കൽ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് ഇൻ ദി അസ്മെന്റ് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദി ഇയർ ദർ വിൽ ബി ടിപ്പിക്കൽ ക്ലിനിക്കൽ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് വിൽ ബി ദർ ദർ ഈസ് പെയിൻ ഹിയറിംഗ് ലോസ് വെർട്ടേഗോ ടിനിറ്റസ് ആൻഡ് ഇയർ ഡ്രൈനേജ് ദീസ് ആർ ദി ടിപ്പിക്കൽ ക്ലിനിക്കൽ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ഇയർ ഡിസീസസ് pain means the ear pain will be there it is uh, medically termed as otalgia okay otal otalgia means pain ear pain okay it is perceived as a feeling of fullness in the ear if the patient complains of ear pain sometimes patient may be having a feeling of fullness in the ear then the hearing loss hearing loss is one of the most important clinical features in the patient those who are having a complaint of uh hearing difficulty or ear diseases hearing loss hearing loss can be occurred suddenly or gradually according to sensory neural uh, hearing loss there are different kinds of hearing loss then you should correct the onset of hearing loss then vertigo vertigo means it's a sensation of motion while the person is not moving it may last for hours or all the day it is mainly due to the balance problem patient may feel a sensation of motion but patient is not moving patient then uh, move cheyna adalengil avare oru just oru giddiness pole feel cheyunu actually patient oru uh, move cheyatha oru avasthayil irikkum pakshe uh, patient is still having a sensation of motion okay avarku oru full avare area alengil avare nilkuna sthalam full move cheyana oru thala kanana pole feel cheyunu വെറ്റിങ്ങ് എപ്പോഴും ഒരു അവേഴ്സ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു മാക്സിമം കുറച്ച് മണിക്കൂറുകൾ നേരത്തേക്ക് ചിലപ്പം ചെയ്യാറുണ്ട് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ചിലപ്പം ചില ഓൾഡ് ഏജ് പേഴ്സൺസിലാണ് ചിലപ്പം അവർക്ക് ഒരു ഫുൾ ഡേ അങ്ങനെ ഫീൽ ചെയ്യാറുണ്ട് ദെൻ ടിനേറ്റസ് മീൻസ് ഇറ്റ്സ് സെൻസേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഇറങ്ങിങ് സെൻസേഷൻ ഇൻ ദ ഇയർ ഇറ്റ് മേ ബി റിപ്പോർട്ടഡ് ആസ് ഹൈ പിച്ച് ഓർ ലോ പിച്ച് റോറിങ് ഹമ്മിങ് ആൻഡ് പെർസിസ്റ്റൻറ്റ് മേസ് ഓഫ് റിങ്ങിങ് സെൻസേഷൻ അതിനാണ് നമ്മൾ ടിനേറ്റസ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഓക്കെ ചിലപ്പോൾ ഇത് ബൈലാറ്ററൽ രണ്ട് ഇയറിൽ കാണും അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു സിംഗിൾ യൂണിലാറ്ററൽ സെൻസേഷൻ ആയിരിക്കും ദെൻ ഇയർ ഡ്രൈനേജ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഓൾസോ കോൾഡ് എസ് ഓട്ടോറിയ ഇറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ബി ബ്ലഡിങ് സാങ്ക്വിനസ് ഡ്രൈനേജ് ആയിരിക്കാം ഡ്യൂ ടു സം ട്രോമാറ്റിക് ഇഞ്ചുറീസ് ഓർ ക്ലിയർ സെറസ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഓട്ടൈറ്റിസ് മീഡിയ അങ്ങനത്തെ ഇൻഫെക്ഷൻസ് ഡിസീസ് ഉള്ള സമയത്ത് പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് മേ ബി ഹാവിങ് എ സെറസ് ഓർ ബ്ലഡി ഡിസ്ചാർജസ് ഓർ ഇൻ സം സിറ്റുവേഷൻസ് ദർ വിൽ ബി മിക്സ് ഡ്രൈനേജ് ഓൾസോ വിൽ ബി ദർ ദെൻ ഇൻഫെക്ഷൻസ് Okay, these clinical features should be assessed. Then past medical history. In the past medical history, you should collect history regarding whether the patient, is ha- patient has had any history of otitis media, which means an infection in the middle ear, then frequent upper respiratory tract infection, then acute and chronic sinus infections. Because in these cases, ear infections can occur as a complication. As a complication of these kind of infections, the patient may be developing ear infections. diseases or ear problems like otorrhea or um, ear pain or uh, this kind of hearing loss this can be occurred as a complication of this type of infection so we should call the history then infection diseases like mumps measles and meningitis as a result there will be hearing loss will be there then in utero exposure to the maternal influenza or rubella may result in hearing loss there will be congenital hearing loss can be seen in babies um the main reason is that maternal exposure to the influenza or rubella like infections during the pregnancy period so you should call the history regarding this kind of infection then premature birth then trauma to the ear traumatic injury then blowing to the ear this can affect the eardrum so that there may be hearing loss will be there then premature birth it also affect with the hearing problem okay then surgical history you should collect patient had any history of surgeries like mastrodectomy tympanoplasty corrective surgery for the eardrum then stepedectomy the labyrinthectomy ectomy these 
history should be needed to assess for any signs and symptoms uh, that can affect the ear function. Then allergies, some kind of allergies uh, that can be resulted in nasal stuffness and congestion. Why? Because in the nasal allergies, there will be blockage in the eustachian tube. It can affect the pressure variations in the we discuss this in the eustachian tube. The channel attack to you, middle ear, no nasopharynx. Okay, so if the patient is having any blockage in the nasal structure, it can cause congestion in the eustachian tube. So, if you do this canal, no block, so there will be pressure variation. And now, uh, details number okay. Then, medications due to the uh, long term use of some kind of medications can result in hearing loss. These are some of the medications, for example, aspirin for the long term use of aspirin can be resulted in tinnitus. Okay, so we should call the history regarding whether the patient has been taking any kind of this kind of drugs. Okay, analgesic, then amnoglycosides, quinine, antiprotosoval agents, and chemotherapeutic agents, and diuretic, especially the last six. In the group of diversity, there will be higher incidence of LASIKs can be leading to hearing loss. Long-term use of LASIKs, hearing loss, uh, loss is leading. So, we have a history connection in the same way. We have a patient who is type of medications in long-term use. Then, psychosocial history. The social history can have an important role in the ear diseases like occupational hazards occupational hazards means those the uh, those who are working in the factory uh, the factual work in the noisy environmental work in the continuous exposure automatically they may develop hearing loss then environmental exposure noise pollution okay then lesser activities and hobbies like swimming. The patient is having a tendency or having a hobby like swimming in the contaminated water. Contaminated water level swimming, ear infections like an IQ. Okay. Ear infections are treated in the inner ear, middle ear like transmit either. Automatically, patient may end up with hearing loss. That's why we should call the history regarding the hobbies. Then exposure to the loud noise above the 80 decibel. If we are hearing. Number noise in the uh, calculate in the decibel area. Okay, 80 above an angular decibel or noise in the human ear na uncomfortable area. Then more than 85 or 19 for a longer period of time, it can damage the cochlea. That's why we should call the occupational history as well as environmental history. The factual of the market in the area more than two years, and then you can angle more than five to ten years exposure on angle automatically they can. Resulted in hearing loss. Then family history. We should collect the history regarding any hair loss or ear surgery among the family members. And if they had any history of hearing loss, we should collect at the age at which age patient or person may develop the hearing loss. This will be having a clear information or correlation between the ear problem. Okay. Yes, until now we were discussing regarding the ear, uh, the anatomy and physiology of ear and uh, a brief description regarding how we can collect a history from a patient who is admitted or who is coming with the complaints of ear diseases. Okay, so if we were discussing the ear, the assessment part, so in the coming class, we will be discussing regarding the physical examination. And the physical examination kore assessment part on the inspection, palpation, and then kore audiometry, kore diagnostic test to give under. From any very slides, we will be discussing. So, I am going to ask you to cover it. So, now that anatomy, you guys, thorough work, study, and then after that, we will cover the continuation bit. Okay. So, uh, with this slide, I am stopping today's class. I hope you got an idea regarding the structure and function of ear as well as assessment part. Okay, thank you.